Hi, I'm going to show you how to find outliers in your data using traditional methods such as uh, IQR and box plots. And I'm also going to show you how to use some algorithms to actually identify uh, different outliers in your data with different sensitivities based on that particular algorithm. So let's get started. So we're looking at the data here. And if you look at the image that's on the screen now, this is an isolation forest algorithm, and we're going to get to that. But let's kind of start at the beginning and see what I've put together. So as normal, we bring in our packages. I brought in pandas, numpy, matplotlib, plotly, and I filtered out some warnings. And then I also looked at our data here. So. Our data, we could take a quick look at that by creating a cell, and I'm just going to use my df.head because what we're looking at is website data. So if we look at the head of the data, you can see that we have our sessions in the different outlier detection methods that we're using, and I'm going to walk you through this. But what we're essentially looking at is sessions with a date column. And if we visualize that, we can look visually. So one of the methods to determine outliers may be domain knowledge or just uh, by eyesight. So if we're looking at this with the naked eye, I think we can hover over this and we can say, okay, that's probably an outlier. On May 25th, we have 4,822 sessions. And here we had 6,402. And all I've done is created a plotly graph with of uh, the plotly saved as a variable px, created a line chart, and brought that in. So we can keep an eye on these two dates, the 25th and the 30th, and probably say, okay, that's probably where our outliers are going to fall. So let's get into the first method, which is looking at a box plot and IQR. So this is a box plot. We can see the median and we can see the minimum and maximum range of our data and everything that falls outside of those um, whiskers is going to be an outlier. And you can see the outliers here are in green and we're gonna use the same method to see our outliers within this data. So I've used Plotly again to create a box plot and then we have the range of our data, we have our whiskers here and then you can see we see two points. And we can see one of those points has a 4,822, uh, 4, which was the peak here. And then the other one that we see is the 6,402 uh, sessions that happened on the 30th, which would be here. So we already have one method that we can traditionally put together. So what we want to do is be able to put that detection in our data frame. And this is just a violin plot. You can still see that we can see the two outliers here and the shape of our data, which kind of mirrors our box plot. And I've just brought that in with Plotly and a violin plot. I brought in the data frame and isolated the sessions. So our next step is to create a function. And we're going to apply this function to, uh, to our whole data frame. So we can see that what I've done is created a function called traditional outline, and that's using that IQR method. I've isolated first quartile and the third quartile using the quantile function that we can attach to a particular column. And what I'm doing is in this function, you're going to pass in the data frame and the column that you want to have this executed on and that column is going to be represented by X. So once we have those two, we can subtract to get the IQR. And then after we have the IQR, if we go back up to our box plot image, it's just an easy formula where we're looking at the maximum, which is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, and then the minimum, which is going to be Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So we build that into our function and we create a new column called traditional. We can call it whatever we want. And I use the numpy where function, which is a conditional. And it's saying if, if our column, and I put these in double brackets 
because it needs to take a series. If it's less than that minimum threshold, which is Q1 minus 1.5 times IKR, give me a negative one. Also, if it's greater than Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, give me a negative one. Everything else is one. And the reason I'm not using zeros and ones is because our algorithm's also gonna be using negative one and one. So it makes it easier when we wanna filter. We can take that function, which is called traditional outlier, and we can pass in one our data frame, which was saved on the variable DF, and then our column that we're concerned with is session. Once that's run, you can see we have negative one here, which matches our uh, date on the 25th, and we have our negative one here, which matches our date on the 30th. So we're in business with the particular outliers. There are no more outliers in here. So now we can jump onto the algorithms and use those. So the first one that we're gonna look at is isolation for us, and this uses a decision tree to look for anomalies. And it, here's a visual that's gonna represent that. Let me zoom out a little bit. So you can see it's, it's doing a tree fashion and because it's called a forest because we're using multiple decision trees to define what that anomaly or outlier is. I bring that in from SK Learn Ensemble and I import isolation forest. And then what I'm doing here is I'm fitting our data to the function, and then I'm fitting our data, which is the sessions. I also use double brackets to make sure it's a series that can be brought in. And then I'm predicting over the same data frame to tell me, okay, you've looked at the data by fitting it, and now give me the predictions on what those um, particular outliers are. And if we look at the array that is brought back, you can see we have a negative one here, a negative one here, a negative one here, a negative one, negative one. So, and also a negative one here. So this is already much more sensitive than that traditional IQR method. Let's go down to the next one. So now we're looking at what we call elliptic envelope. And this uses a Gaussian or normal distribution and looks at what falls outside of that data range. And we did the same thing. We used sklearn.covariance. We imported that particular library, and then we brought in the function. We fit our data to it, and then we run that over our existing data with a prediction. And you can already see we have one, two, and a little less, three, four, than the previous one. And we're going to look at all this together in one minute. The next one we're gonna be using is the local outlier factor. Now we're gonna be bringing that in from the, the SK neighbors uh, library. So you can think about like KNN, how we look at the distance from a particular point to determine what an outlier is. And we can also specify the sensitivity of this outlier by saying, look at the five nearest neighbors and then determine what an outlier is. And you can see the result here. We also have some negatives that we're gonna look at in one moment. Now the next job I wanna do is, I don't wanna like run that all together. I wanna put that in a function and run it over the data frame. So I've already done traditional with a function. So I'm creating another function and then we're gonna put both of these together. We're looking at the same data being run under that function. That function takes the data frame and the column, which is represented by X. And then we essentially create new columns by naming these columns and then using that same method of fitting the data and predicting over it. I run that function and this is what we get back because it's gonna return a data frame. And what we're going to get back we can already see, and let me just zoom in a bit more here. We can already see where those outlier detection systems are going to classify outliers. So each one of those has a benefit. Each one of those has its own uh, sensitivity. For example, traditional, we know we only found two points. 
And th this one, we can see that isolation force considers this very low value an outlier. But this was not detected on any of the others. So isolation force is really good for very large data sets because it's super sensitive. And if we keep rolling down, we can see that yes, the, fit, the 25th was found across all of our methods. And then we can see that isolation force here is still finding quite a lot. And there's another low one. So you can see it's, it's pretty good for that low outlier. The 30th, which had our highest value, is also detected. We can see the traditional method is not being picked up here, but we have all of the outliers finding these. So the benefit of each one of these has different properties. We know we can use the neighbors, the local outlier factor, and modify neighbors to make our outlier sensitivity a little bit better. We know if we have a normally distributed data set, we can definitely use this elliptic envelope method. And for isolation forest, we know that it works a lot better for large data and a little bit of the lower and, um, outliers and it's, it's much more sensitive. So the last part, what we want to do is just create one singular function that you can repeatedly apply to your data. And all I've done is taken that original function, dumped it, the first part here to get traditional, and you can see that. And I've just brought in the second part. And what we get is a resulting data frame where we can look at all the different outliers. I hope that was helpful. Leave a comment or suggestion. Um, thanks for.